Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and Representative Baker uh, kind of touched on a piece that, you know, again, I'm, I'm an urban legislator, I, I, uh, but I do, having spent a lot of time on this particular issue, I have uh, always made it an effort and a priority to treat greater Minnesota and urban Minnesota uh, maybe if not a little bit more towards greater Minnesota, not because I don't like the reason, but I know that there's, there's, many, there's many needs out there. And um, my, you know, I've heard two legislators here talk about technology is going to change. And it is. It, it's changing. I can't remember what they call the computer murky law or whatever the hell it is, but, you know, it, it multiplies more than my uh, second grade math teacher did. So, um, and we, that flip phone that we had was 10 years ago. And in 10 years, I'm now carrying that computer in my pocket. And 10 years is a generation. And can Greater Minnesota, and this is a question to represent Baker, can Greater Minnesota stand to lose a generation of its kids? Mr. Chair and Representative Mahoney, I think um, what we are asked to do here, I think, is to spend our resources very carefully and a lot of different priorities. And I think that as I have um, worked really hard with our members that I communicate with, um, especially at least our members here in this committee, is that I'm pushing as hard as I can to get as much money out there to match any <coughs> private dollars as possible to maximize our investment along with the federal funds that we just, I don't want to ignore that. It's important to recognize those $85 million, again, $500 million plus dollars in the next total five years project or six years with the federal cap team. I don't want to ignore that. If we do that, I think we're not being good stewards of the dollars. But I also want to recognize the fact that we've also got to be innovative and, and look at policy. Again, I, I want to uh, congratulate and thank uh, Chair Loomer with the education side, look at $7 million in, in broadband funding for some really neat ideas about some hotspots and some wireless buses so that the kids can do their homework on the way home. Those are some new innovative ways that we can get broadband to the kids and to the homes faster so we don't lose more generations, so we don't lose another decade because Every year that goes by, Representative Mahoney, is another year that I take the risk of losing members in my community to um, better broadband service, and I'm, I'm fighting hard for that. Representative um, I I'm not sure that, I mean, that was a great example of how to get around the answering your question. I'm going to say that Greater Minnesota, I'll answer it for you. Greater Minnesota cannot afford to lose another generation of kids if you expect to have any economic vitality in greater Minnesota. Plain and simple. Uh, whether it's the kid that's a basketball player who does his homework on, or kids or her homework on the bus, or the young, I really like it now, we have a new excuse for teenagers, oh, don't worry yet, I'm at the library doing my homework. <laughs> I wish I had that one. Um, but, you're gonna lose, you know, if not the whole generation, significant portion. Uh, because in 10 years, yes, we'll have lots of different um, pieces to that. So, and that's sad. That really makes me sad about Greater Minnesota, but I guess that's what it is. And that's what happens when you uh, campaign on a Greater Minnesota platform. I have a question to your, uh, I'm gonna ask you to explain, I know Representative Gunther put the amendment up, but on page 2, line 17, it says, and the commissioner shall determine uh, job retention. Is that commissioner of deed or commissioner of broadband, the office of broadband? Um, Mr. Hila, could you uh, comment on what, the, what uh, section we're amending here and what the section is that Thank you, Mr. Chair. The, uh, the lines of the amendment that Representative Mahoney referred to are amending um, lines C 
69.2 uh, and 3 in, in the bill. And this is a subdivision that uh, states what the commissioner's priorities are supposed to be when awarding grants under the broadband program. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, right now, the language says, in evaluating applications and awarding grants, the commissioner, uh, or, I'm sorry, in, about, I'm looking at paragraph A now, the top of 69, in evaluating applications and awarding grants, the commissioner shall give priority to applications that are constructed in areas identified by the director of the Office of Broadband Development as unserved. This language adds to that that the, commis that, that the commissioner shall give priority to applications that the commissioner determines will result in the creation or retention of jobs in underserved areas located in counties outside the metropolitan area. So it, it adds a new priority that the commissioner shall give priority to in determining where those grants should be awarded. Well, I understand, Mr. Judge, yeah, which I, I understand that. I'm trying to get clarification. Is it the commissioner of the Employment and Economic Development, Department of Economic Development, or is it is there another commissioner? I'm just trying to figure out who it is. Is there a commissioner of broadband? So are you separating out stuff? I want to make sure I understand and there's no um, uh, confusion at E when they figure this out. Let's go back to the tape. It is the commissioner of E that's making these decisions. Is that correct? Mr. Chair, Representative Mahoney. Yes, in this instance, commissioner refers to the commissioner of E. I may have one more question, Mr. Chair. And um, could somebody explain, because what I'm, I know what I'm reading, I want to make sure I'm reading this correctly, but mine's uh, on the amendment 1.4 through uh, 1.7. As I understand it, you're getting rid of the three or four different uh, pots of money that were there and we're just allowing the commissioner discretion. So are we gone with all the the you know the little pots for wireless and uh, economic development or uh, the end? wireless project, low income area and towns over two thousand. Are you getting rid of all those that language, Mr. Chair? Uh, that amendment does this, yes. Right. Any additional discussion on the 825 amendment? Just a correction on the amendment, Mr. Chair. The low-income component is still part of the main bill, but it does, um, the other two are kind of locked together as one. So the low income is still here. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the 825 amendment, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. Motion prevails. The 825 amendment is adopted.